we have been discussing digital modulation techniques for some classes. So far, we have we have discussed uh, some digital modulation techniques like PAM, QAM, PSK, FSK, and also PPM. Among them, we have seen that FSK and PPM are orthogonal modulation techniques satisfy some conditions. For example, for FSK, the uh, step frequency should be multiple of 1 by 2 t and similarly for PPM also the shifted pulses should not overlap with each other. So, once those conditions are satisfied then FSK and PPM are orthogonal modulation uh, orthogonal modulation. Now, we have uh, we have also covered some basic linear algebra which will be which has come to use and which will uh, come to use even later. In this class, we will start with another modulation technique called biorthogonal modulation and then uh, this is actually a class of modulation techniques P, uh, PPM and FSK are orthogonal modulation. So, that is orthogonal and we will have another similar technique called biorthogonal modulation. Afterwards, we will go into decode demodulation of modulated signals for different kind of modulation. So, let us start with biorthogonal modulation. By orthogonal signals. We know what is an orthogonal signal set. So, suppose phi naught t, phi 1 t till phi n minus 1 t are orthonormal. For example, they may be frequency shifted versions of the same pulse or they may be time shifted versions like in the case of PPM of the same pulse. So, that they are ortho orthonormal, orthogonal and then uh, length is the, the magnitude of each is scaled in such a way that they have unit length. Then uh, for the orthogonal modulation, we have seen that if we want to transmit energy E signals, then we transmit these signals. These signals phi naught to phi n minus 1, but multiplied by root over E to get energy E, but for biorthogonal signals we take all these signals and also we add all the negatives of these signals. So, we add minus root E phi naught T minus root E phi n minus 1 T. So, this is biorthogonal signal set, so, this is biorthogonal. We can see that a, a, an orthonormal basis for this signal set is also this phi naught to phi n minus 1 t, because all these other signals also can be expressed as just scaling of each one of them. So, so the dimension of the signal space is still n, because the dimension is actually defined as the number of elements in a basis. Set. So this is the this is a basis set, orthonormal basis set, and n is the number of uh, number of functions there. So n is the dimension. So we can plot all these signals as points in the n-dimensional space. Let us see some examples. Suppose n is two. Then, for orthogonal signaling in dimension two, we have points like this two points. This is root E 0 and this is 0 root E. Now, if we want biorthogonal signaling in dimension 2, 
we will add their negatives also this one and this one number of points will be 4 that is 2 times n similarly if we want so this is for n equal to 2 and m equal to 4 similarly if we have n equal to 3 that is 3 dimension then the constellation constellation will look like So, we will draw only the positive axis and the negative axis we will draw with dotted lines. So, this is n equal to 3, this is this on the negative sides and for orthogonal signaling in dimension 3 we have points like this. We have discussed that in the case of FSK and PPM. Now, we will add minus of each of these points. So, this is n equal to 3, number of points equal to 6, this by orthogonal signaling in dimension 3. Similarly, we can have in any dimension and uh, so, we will uh, see some properties of this signal set. One, it is still constant energy each one has the same energy E. Second, they are not this is not distance uniform. meaning by if you take one point in the signal set distance to all other points are not same distance to all other points are not same for example if you take this point from here the distance to this point is root over 2e we saw that in the case of orthogonal signaling but from distance from here to here is just 2 times root e so this distance is 2 times root e whereas this distance is root over 2 e. So, distance uh, from this point to all to two of these to this, these two points are not same. It is not distance uniform and here also like orthogonal if you want to increase the number of points if we increase m the bandwidth increases because the dimension of the signal space will increase has to be increased because that is m by 2 and to increase the dimension you have to increase the bandwidth because that can be done either by doing FSK if you want to increase the dim uh, bandwidth uh, increase the number of dimensions we can do that by take picking up different frequencies or different time uh, to pick up different time instances the time shifts in ppm we have to take a narrower pulse and that will increase the bandwidth so in either way it is uh, always true that to increase the dimension of the signal space you have to increase the bandwidth okay so now uh, we have seen several modulation techniques. We have seen PAM, pulse amplitude modulation, PSK, phase shift keying. So this is amplitude, this is phase, this is then frequency, FSK. Then QAM is can be considered as combined PAM and PSK or can be com is a combined PAM of, of two different carriers. So, we also have QAM and then we have PPM pulse position modulation. 
pulse position modulation is used particularly um, was used for ultra wideband applications like uh, detecting underground uh, underground things so pulse position modulation used to be used for such uh, ultra wideband applications now uh, we have seen that this fsk and ppm are orthogonal then psk is constant energy fsk is constant energy ppm is also constant energy these need not be now we will see we have discussed how to demodulate pam signal in detail with match filtering we will see that the same kind of technique can be used for detecting all the other modulation also so we'll discuss now demodulation so suppose that now we will not assume that this is a particular kind of modulation we will take any modulation that is we will take any set of signals that is that are used in transmitter and then we will see at the receiver how we should demodulate the signal that is how should we estimate which message was transmitted which m was transmitted so we will not assume anything any property of the uh, transmitted signals like fsk ppm or qam we will not assume anything regarding that suppose we have xm t 0 m this is the signal set and this is a basis of the signal space that is basis of span so we are given that the transmitter uses these signals to transmit message m and if you take the subspace that is generated by these signals that is the span of these signals we will have this is a basis of orthonormal basis of this subspace so we know that every xm can be expressed as a linear combination of these phi i's so dimension of the signal space is n and these are the basis vectors so we know that xmt can be expressed as a linear combination of phi i t so this is for all possible m so now we will construct with these coefficients we will construct the vectors x n instead of taking as a function we will express this we will represent this signal as a vector x m with components this x m i so x m 0 x m 1 x m n so this is in the n dimension this vector is in the n dimensional vector space so this these are the actually these are the points of the constellation of the signal set we actually draw these points in the n dimensional space and we call that as the constellation of the signal set now suppose that a particular xm was transmitted we will see how to how to detect how to estimate which m was transmitted so suppose x m t was transmitted we will find this correlation y we will call y i this is the correlation 
or the inner product of yt and phi t. This is the inner product and we have seen that this inner product can be computed using a matched filter. So, this can be written as now y t is nothing but x m t plus n t. So, x m t plus n t, n t will separate. Now, for the x m t part we can write this way j equal to 0 to n minus 1 x m i integration 0 to t phi i phi j t this is j phi j t phi i t d t plus the integration of the noise after multiplying by this. So, we will say we will assume that that is n i. Now, what is this integration? So, this is obtained by taking only x m part here and x m is summation j equal to 0 to n minus 1 x m j phi j t. We have seen that here. So, taking the integration inside summation we get this. Now, what is this integration? We know that inner product of phi j and phi i is 0 if j not equal to i. So, this is non-zero and this is equal to 1 only if i equal to j otherwise it is 0. So, it is the delta function this integration is delta i j. So, that is if i equal to j then del delta of that is 1 if they are not equal then it is 0 plus n i. So, this is summation over j i is a fixed number. So, for only for j equal to i this will be 1 for all others it will be 0 and when it you multiply 0 with this you will get 0 there also this sum this product also will be 0. So, you will get only one term here which will be for j equal to i and that will be x m i because j is equal to i for that case. So, x m i plus n i. Now, what is this x m i is the ith component of x m. So, we are actually trying to find out this x m estimate x m. If we find x m we know what is x m t also. So, we will know what is m if we know x m. So, this is the component how to find now this component if you do this operation received signal multiply with this and take integration basically finding the inner product of y t and phi i t then we will get this. So, this is except for the noise it is actually the ith component of the transmitted signal. So, this is an estimate of this component because it is corrupted by only noise. If the noise is small this will give us approximately same as x m i. So, now if we take y we construct with these components a vector y 0, y 1, y n minus 1 with these components then we see that this is an estimate of the vector x plus some noise vector x naught plus n naught x 1 plus n 1 dot dot dot. So, so those noise components we take as another vector then we have n naught n 1 n n minus 1. So, this is x plus another a noise vector n. So, this is an estimate of x is corrupted by only noise. So, from here we can if we get y then we can estimate x and then we will know we will know the vector. So, from there we can see what is m. So, to find which now, this this there is also noise we cannot really extract this part alone it is already added with noise. So, we have only this we do not have this, but so if we for example, take a, a constellation so with some points this will be th these are the points these are the transmitted points x m vectors. And then what we receive here suppose we transmitted this 
and what we receive here, here is this vector plus some noise vector and the received vector will be somewhere here. Now, how do we find if we have received this vector that is we have received after doing all these operations with each i we get all these components and we get this vector from there we plot it. Now, how do we find which point was actually transmitted this is not a transmitted point this is somewhere in between. So, to, to do that one can easily see that one uh, way will be to find just the nearest point and that is the most probably probable transmitted point. So, for this we will take this because this is the near, this is the nearest point to this. So, we will say we will assume that this was transmitted so, that is that is our decision. Okay. So, that is the way we will find we will see the distance of y from each x m vectors each x m vector like this we have y and we take each x m vector and find the distance and take that m for which we get the minimum distance that m will be assumed to be transmitted. So, our decision will be that m. So, for any m now how do we compute the distance for any m distance between y and x m is let us take the square because we can to see which is the minimum distance we can take the minimum square distance also whichever distance is minimum that square also will be minimum among all the square distances. So, we do not want to have a power half here that is why I am taking it on that side. So, y i minus x m i square so, component wise is the Euclidean distance we have discussed it before and now we need to minimize this for different m we need to find which m gives us minimum square distance. So, what is this? So, this now can be written as i equal to 0 to n minus 1 then now what is this mod square? It is nothing but the nothing but the inner product of y i minus x m i with itself. We have seen that the, this length square is nothing but inner product of the vector with itself. So, here we have mod y i square because first we take the inner product like a minus b inner product a minus b can be written as now we can do this multiplication a a minus a b inner product minus b a inner product plus b b inner product. So, a a inner product is nothing but again mod a square. So, we have this here and similarly we have this term mod x m i square minus now let us see what we get from this kind of expression. We have mod a square plus mod b square minus inner product b a minus inner product a b. Now, from the definition of inner product we can see that inner product of a b will be conjugate of inner product of b a. You see all the definitions of inner product for, for vectors we have seen that inner product is that way for complex numbers it will be conjugate. For reals it will be same because conjugate is nothing but the same vector. So, uh, so here so, so this is conjugate of this. So, we will have their addition will be the two times the real part of e, this one or this one real part of them are same because one is conjugate of other. So, this is nothing but two times real b a or a b. So, here we have two times real y uh, y i x m i. Okay. 
So, this is not star. So, this now can be written as this summation is over each term. So, this summation can be written as mod y vector square, then this can be written as x m vector square, then this is 2 real part of the inner product of these vectors. Now, we want to minimize this quantity for different m. We want to compute this for different m, for different x m and then find out which m gives us minimum here. Now, for comparing, comparing that this is independent of m. So, we can we need not consider this. So, we can only compute this part and see which m gives us minimum. So, instead of that we can also do take the negative of that that is we can maximize the negative of this quantity that means maximize my uh, two real minus this. Now, we can also divide it by 2 and then maximize that. So, we can maximize real Now, though we said that these vectors and the, all the signals are in general complex signals, now we will specialize to real signals. The reason is that first in practice the signals may be real when it is pass band or we are really transmitting through the low pass channel or even if the channel is complex and the signal set is complex, we can view the signal set as uh, if, if the signal space is of dimension capital N over the complex field, then we can assume that it is the signals are actually real signals and the signal space, space is of dimension 2 times capital N, because we can separate the real part and imaginary part of the signals and then we will get real signals 2 times M number of real signals and the dimension of the signal space is will also increase and as a result we can assume that we are we have transmitted uh, real signals we have received real signals though actually we received complex signals and transmitted complex signal. So, we can do the demodulation in terms of the real signals that is in terms of the real and imaginary parts of the signals without considering the signals as complex. So, we will assume that the signals are real signals. So, in practice what will happen is that this y though the uh, though the original signals were complex, we would have separated the real parts and imaginary parts and considered them uh, separately. And so, each vector each signal will be a point in the 2 n dimensional space. Okay. So, we will assume that these vectors then the components also will be now th this vectors will be in a space of dimension 2 n over the real numbers. So, these will be real vectors of bigger length instead of complex vector of length n. So, so if the signal if these vectors are real signals are complex, but we represent them as vectors over the real field then we can assume these vectors to be real. Then we will have for for real case we will have only not real part a real part of a real number is real uh, itself so only this. So, so let me explain it again so why we are taking it this way instead of complex vectors why are you taking real vectors. If you have the signal signal x 1 t 
it has some real part x1 rt, it has some imaginary part x1 it and, uh, and we have some, some um, we can say that this is this is a vector this times i uh, j. So, this is this can be considered as a point in two n dimensional space if the dimension of the signal space over real numbers is 2 n. So, then this can be expressed as so, this, they will have some basis phi naught t phi n t now n minus 1 t. Now, this n will be much larger if we consider the vector space as a vector space over real numbers. So, only thing what will happen is that for considering it as a real uh, a vector space, we will have higher dimensional vectors here. So, with that we can maximize this quantity. So, we have these vectors, we can compute these vectors by taking taking this, taking this and then so we can compute this this way and then find these quantities for different m, this quantity for different m and choose that m for which this is maximum. So, that is our uh, demodulation principle. Okay. So, let us draw the diagram the way we will do it. So, this is the inner product, this is also called correlation of two vectors or correlation of two signals if they are signals. So, inner product in terms of signals is also called correlation. So, this receiver is called correlation what we are going to draw in terms of this for decoding in using this principle. So, correlation receiver. So, what would we do first? First we will compute the y i s this. We want to dis, dis, do this operation. So, y i y t is the received signal, then we will pass it through, we will first multiply with this signal these signals. So, and we are assuming real now, we are assuming that phi i's are real, but these uh, coefficients, these coefficients phi i's are complex, but these coefficients are real. Okay. So, phi i phi naught star t phi 1 star t so we have so this is not i have drawn it as filter but this is not a filter we have to actually multiply this so we have product with phi naught star t, phi 1 star t, phi n minus 1 star t. So, we have the products here. Now, we want to do the integration from 0 to t. So, this integration now 0 to t, 0 to t, 0 to t. So, we have got y i is here y i. So, y naught y 1 y n this we have got. So, we have got this vector here. Now, what we want to do is we want to compute this this inner product this correlation. So, how do you find x m s are known these vectors are known. So, we have to take correlation with this vector with each, each x m. So, here this column vector will multiply by 
a matrix that will be such that. So, here the output here, so there will be there, there are n inputs and there will be m outputs. So, the output here will be for output the ith output will be j the the mth output or mth output let us say will be j equal to 0 to n minus 1 y j x m j. This is basically the correlation. So, we are finding this correlation this is defined as summation of the product of the components. So, this is the mth output. So, here we will have y x 0 and so on. So, there will be m number of such for each message there is 1 and then we want to add x this term minus of this term to the mth component. So, here we want to add minus mod x 0 square by 2. Second, we want to add minus mod x 1 square by 2. And the last one we want to add minus mod x m minus 1 square by 2 and then these are our uh, results here. So, we have computed these terms for different m for different m and then we want to pick the one which give which is maximum. So, what we need to do here is choose maximum. So, select maximum. whichever gives us the maximum that is the estimate of m. So, estimate of m is the that one if it is this is maximum this output is maximum then the m hat is 0 and so on. So, this is called the correlation receiver because we are finding the correlation here using this is the correlation of y t with uh, phi naught t and here again we are finding the correlation of this vector with each signal vector. Okay. Now, this operation finding this correlation of y t with phi naught t here and phi 1 t here and so on can be performed in terms of matched filters. So, we will now see how it can be done using matched filter. So, what is y i? We said it is 0 to t y t phi i star t d t. Now, this is nothing but 0 to t y t phi i star I can write t as capital T minus capital T minus t d t. Now, what is this? If we see this, this is the convolution formula y t phi i star capital T capital T minus. So, this is this should be Okay, it is right. Now, if we take this filter, and find the function, this function at capital T minus T, what will it be value? What will be the value of it? We have to put capital T minus T in place of T. So if this is our function some some say h t then what is h t minus t 
it is phi i star t minus in place of small t we will put this so capital T minus t. So, this is so, so we can say that this is the output of a matched filter this filter with impulse response this at capital T. So, we are evaluating the convolution of y t and h t at capital T that then we will have this expression. So, this is nothing but the output this is the output of the filter matched to phi i t when y t is the input. So, output of the filter matched to phi i t at capital T. So, we have to we can evaluate this by passing y t through this filter and then sampling it at sampling the output at capital T that will be the value of y i. So, we can say that we can implement the that operation in the following way instead of multiplying by phi i star t and then integrating we can pass it through this filter phi naught star t minus t phi 1 star t minus t then we sample it at t. Then here again we have got y naught y 1 y m minus 1. Then we do the same things as we did here. Once we have got this we can do the same thing. So, we will here we will compute for different m we will compute summation j equal to 0 to n minus 1 y j x m j and then we will add minus mod x 1 square by 2 minus mod x naught square by 2. minus mod x m minus 1 square by 2 and then select the largest. Select largest to get to estimate which message was transmitted. So, we have seen two kinds of receivers one is they actually do the same things their performance will be exactly same, but one uses this multiplier and integrator to find the correlation the other uses a filter matched filter and sampler to perform the same operation. So, this is called the matched filter receiver. So, matched filter receiver. Now, instead of performing matched filtering at different uh, basis signals with different basis signals, we can also do matched filtering directly with the with each signal, each transmitted a possible transmitted signal. So, the difference is that what is the use of having all these basis vectors. First of all, we have seen that as a transmitter itself, we need not have so many signal generators, separate signal generators as many as m. We can have just capital N number of basis signals and then use linear combination of them to generate the signals that are to be transmitted. So, at the transmitter it helps to generate the signals in terms of these signals and at the receiver also if we do this way because then we will this is capital N we will 
uh, need less number of matched filters because usually capital N will be much smaller than capital M for most of the modulation schemes, not for orthogonal modulation scheme, scheme or biorthogonal modulation scheme of course. For biorthogonal also this will be half of capital N. So, uh, but we can still in principle do this matched filter receiver uh, reception using matched filters matched to individual transmitted signals. So, how do we do this? So, we see that we want to compute M using matched filter. So, here we have computed that this this is y x m, but this can be computed directly by passing it through match filter and sampling, but the matched filter has to be x m matched to x m t itself. So, because this is let us see what this is this is y t x m t, we have seen that we have we have discussed that once they are expressed both expressed in terms of uh, orthonormal basis inner product of these two vectors will be same as inner product of these two signals. So, this is 0 to t y t x m t d t. So, star. So, this again just like before we can write this as x m t minus t minus t d t. This is again the output of the filter x m t minus t filter with impulse response this at capital T at capital T when excited by y t. So, if we have this matched filter matched to x m t instead of those phi i t's and then pass uh, this y t through this filter, then sample the output at capital T, then we will get this thing which is the output here for the mth signal, uh, mth output here. Then, so we can now do the same operations as after this, we can now do all these operations as before. So, our uh, receiver structure with this principle will be receive this y t, then pass it through x naught star capital T minus t, x 1 star capital T minus t, x m minus 1 star capital T minus t and then sample at capital T then as before add minus mod x naught square by 2 minus mod x 1 square by 2 minus mod x m minus 1 square by 2. then select the largest. So, this is basically we have computed this here, this, this, this quantities here by doing this mass filtering directly with the uh, with the signal uh, possible transmitted signals. Okay. So, this is the mass filter this is also a mass filter receiver, but this is a receiver which uses m number of match filters. m number of matched filters matched directly to 
to the signal set. So, so this is the this and this both are matched filters, but this will possibly use less number of matched filters. The number is capital N. Here we will use capital M number of matched filters, which will so we will need more number of matched filters. But both will perform exactly similarly and there will not be dif any difference in the performance of the two. The only difference will be possibly in the complexity of the implementation. So, in this class we have considered another modulation technique called bi orthogonal modulation technique. Bi orthogonal is not a specific modulation technique, but it is a class of modulation techniques. So, it can be using FSK, it can be using PPM, we basically add more points the negative points of the orthogonal signal set. So, that uh, gives us a bi orthogonal signal and then we have discussed demodulation for different kind of uh, modulation techniques as a in a generalized framework. So, we have not assumed any particular kind of modulation, we have just discussed the demodulation techniques for any arbitrary signal set. So, if you are given a set of signals, if we are told that the transmitter uses these signals to transmit message, then we have seen how to do the demodulation at the receiver. Now, in the next class, we will see some specific modulation techniques and see how the demodulation can be made simpler for specific modulation techniques like FSK, PPM, PSK. For these uh, some of these modulation techniques, the demodulation some of these uh, some of the structure can be simplified at the receiver. So, that is all for today. Next class, we will start the specific demodulation techniques for different kinds of modulation. See you next time.